Good morning, everyone. We're out in Yosemite Park. We went to see the beautiful park yesterday and God's glorious creation, mountains and trees. But one of the highlights always when you travel is meeting fellow Jews. And we had wonderful experiences. And it reminds me of this week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion tells us how before the Jewish people about to cross into the land of Israel, two tribes, God and Ruvain, approach Moses. And they say, Moses, we don't want to go into the land of Israel. We'd rather settle on the east bank of the Jordan because this is fertile ground for our cattle. We have a lot of flock and this is better land for our flock. And Moses gets quite upset with them and it says, are you going to make the same mistake that the 12 spies made? At least 10 of them not wanting to go into the land of Israel? Are you going to reject God's promised land? And you will demoralize your fellow Jews by not being willing to fight for the land of Israel. And the two tribes say, no, Moses, we're ready to fight. Only after the land is conquered will we come back and settle on this side of the Jordan. And the question is, why didn't they truly want to go into the land of Israel? How could it be that they chose to settle outside of the land of Israel? And one very moving answer is that they had a hidden agenda. Their hidden agenda was that God had said that Moses would not enter the land of Israel. He would be buried on the east bank of the Jordan. And they said to themselves, how can we leave our beloved teacher and leader Moses behind alone? We want to remain here to be able to live in the proximity of our leader's resting place so he should not be left behind and neglected. They couldn't say that to Moses directly. So they came with an excuse saying, we want to have pasture for our cattle. But their true motivation was their love for their teacher and they were sacrificing their portion in the land of Israel just to remain close to their beloved teacher. But yet their choice was a mistake because what they failed to realize was is that Moses doesn't live where his body rests. Moses lives in his vision, in his teachings, in his spiritual path that he forged for all of us. And therefore a Jew could be anywhere in the world including in Yosemite National Park and Moses is with him in that park. Why? Because he's living in the, by the guidance, the teachings, the love, the inspiration of Moshe Rabbeinu. Yesterday we saw a group of teens and they were traveling through Yosemite Park but because they eat kosher of course they had a barbecue, a grill with kosher meat and when they saw us they were like hey we have kosher food, they were all wearing kippot, you want to have some kosher hot dogs and hamburgers Later on in our trip, we saw a group of Israeli soldiers who had just come out of Gaza and they came here to get a little bit of a break because after their break, they're going back, but this time they're being sent on the northern border and they may have to go into Lebanon. When you see Jews all over the world 3,000 years later living by the teachings of Moses, by the Torah, and by the love of the land of Israel that he taught us and gave us, then we know that Moses lives on and therefore God and Reuven did not have to be where Moses was buried because it's not where he's buried, it's where he lives in all of our lives. I remember once a member of our synagogue was telling me about a big dilemma he's having and he said to me, I have to discuss it with my father. And I knew that his father had passed away a number of years ago. I actually officiated at his wedding and I said, what do you mean discuss it with your father? Your father passed away, didn't he? And he said to me, Rabbi, my father and I were so close. We spoke daily throughout our lives. We had such a close friendship and bond that I could discuss anything with my father and I could hear my father speaking to me and telling me exactly what to do. That's the message of this week's Parsha.